Welcome everybody to one of the most highly requested videos in the history of my YouTube channel, a recap of the match between Dewa Kipas and Arin Sukandar. If you don't know the current ongoing drama and what's been going on the past few weeks here in March 2021, just go look up Gotham Chess Indonesia. It'll be a fascinating read. Uh, the 15 second story is a person was banned for cheating on chess.com. Uh, their son made a Facebook post that went viral claiming they didn't cheat and it went and went totally crazy and it exploded there was a massive story and ultimately a live match was played on the podcast of Deddy Corbusier uh, and we're gonna look at those three games in this video between Irene who I believe is the fifth highest rated player in the entire country of Indonesia she's been the Asian champion um, and uh, I mean she, she's an exceptional chess player and yeah, uh, and then afterward I will share my thoughts big picture on the drama and I will have a video out on the entire story. But this is the first game. Irene's got the white pieces. She begins with e4. Love this move. Have a course on it. Uh, and d4 too though. c6, the Karo Khan defense. Basically black wants to play d5. Uh, Irene plays d4. Black plays d5. Now white has a lot of options here. Uh, white can advance in the center. This is my favorite thing to play. You can also take and you can also guard your pawn. Three different branches, right? That's how chess works, chess theory. Irene decides to take, clarifying the situation in the center, and then plays the move bishop to d3. This is known as the exchange variation. Now black has a handful of plans. You can develop both of your knights, decide where this bishop goes. You can play g6 and bishop g7. A lot of different setups. So far, so good. White guards the pawn in the center with the other pawn. Not able to put the knight there like standard, but that's okay because you're going to put your bishop out and then play knight to d2. We get e6. This is already, I mean, this is not a mistake, but it's a suboptimal move. And you would say, why is that a suboptimal move? Well, you've blocked in your bishop. I mean, your position is still very solid, but that is actually why it's better to play knight f6 first. It's actually better to commit the knights because you know more often than not that the knights are going to be going to the middle of the board rather than the bishops, right? So the bishop now is stuck. Now here, Irene plays knight f3, black plays knight f6, white castles, black plays bishop e7. Again, bishop e7 is good. Bishop d6 is a bit more active. So bishop e7 is a bit of a passive square, not really fighting for any squares in white's territory. White just continues with development and plays knight to e5. Now, here, Irene could have kind of finished the development here with knight d2, uh, but she decides, I've got this dominant square in the center, right? This is very common for this kind of structure. Strong players, master players, uh, we like to play on the structure. So you plant your knight here. By planting your knight here, uh, you activate your queen, right? You open up these lines for the queen, and in the future, you will move the bishop out of the way and play f4. And you'll clamp down on the center and you'll line up this. And because you have this blockade down the center of the board, it disallows black from transferring pieces to this side to defend the king. Watch. Knight to e4, right? She plays f3. Now, uh, or Dewakipas, he takes on e5. And here she has a decision. Is she going to take this or this? And she decides to take like this. He moves the knight back to f6. And she plays queen c2. So right now, she's lining up to h7. Bishop takes knight is uh, is a threat. Uh, he plays h6. He does spot it. And she plays knight to d2. So far, so good. White is slightly better. White has more space, more active pieces, and better prospects. Black plays bishop d6. And now again, rather than trading or this, white plays the move rook e1. Just improving their position. This rook hasn't played yet. So you go rook e1, clamp down on the center. You want them to take you. Knight to h5. Now this is, this is kind of the first move of the game. It takes about 14 moves. But, but, but the level disparity is very clear. I mean, knight h5 is, is a move that simply, it doesn't improve black's position at all. Um, and, and this knight here is just a liability. You know, it can be a target. Uh, it's going to be stranded from the side of the board. It's not going to be able to come back anytime soon. And more, more likely than not, it's just going to have to go back here or it's going to be lost. A better move here might have been actually to surprisingly take this. And then if takes, try to create some sort of counterplay, for example, like this. And ultimately, you will need to go back to d7 and try to maybe rotate the knight to the other side of the board to make that trade. But it's a very passive and maneuvering and slow position for black. Knight to h5, and now we see this f4. So Irene is getting everything she wants. The only thing she would like is if you could somehow rotate these two. If the queen was in front of the bishop, this would just be mate. But because it's only the bishop going down there, it's just a check. So... Now we get b6. So again, two moves on kind of opposite sides of the board. Black is losing the thread, as we say in chess. Like, you, you, you're running out of what to do. Now she plays queen d1. So the knight has to go back. And now she plays queen f3. And it's very clear what she wants. I mean, it's very clear what she wants. She's going to march in now with the pawn. So again, kind of the level difference. 
Here, White has a few ways to make progress, but this pawn break offering this capture and Queen F5 offering an infiltration. Now you have this attack, you have the pressure on the knight, and Black is just so passive. All of Black's pieces are out, but they're not fighting for the necessary squares on the board. And so here we have kind of the big dramatic moment of game number one as uh, Dewa Kipas plays Queen C8, which just abandons this bishop completely. <laughs> uh, it, it used to be guarded by the queen, but I guess he was, you know, he saw this. Uh, and here just bishop takes, and now the, the bishop just comes back. Now, white is up a bishop and has all of the benefits of their position that they had previously. So the pressure is going to be very bad. Bishop to a6, bishop takes f6, a very nice move. Uh, chopping down the, uh, the position here, and now f takes e6. Just shred it all open like a, like a Christmas present, you know, just... Rah! And then here, and white has a few ways to win this, but she takes on a6. This move deflects the queen, right? You're winning by material, so you want to trade some pieces. And now she plays rook takes e6, f takes e6. And in this position, the game, first game ends, uh, and Irene takes a 1-0 match lead. Um, she, uh, well, the game is over because she will literally just go here, and then the queen will hunt down all the pawns. And you can take this to an end game, but more likely you're just going to deliver checkmate because you have queen g6 and rook f7, and you're just going to win the game. So she has a 1-0 lead. And we go to the second game. Now, she's playing with the black pieces here. Um, and uh, Dewa Keepers begins with d4. Knight f6, knight f3. So far, very, you know, very solid. Black plays b6. This is a setup by white that is kind of... Uh, it, it's known as very non-confrontational. Like, this is a... It, you know, it, it's a super solid queen's pawn setup. But again, it's very passive. Right? Like, this bishop isn't out. White is not fighting for an advantage here. White is just playing a chess game, basically. Like, white's pieces are out, but the knight is not really developed toward the middle. Like, this bishop hasn't been accounted for. You know, it's an opening to go e3, but you would rather develop your bishop because you just completely locked it out of the game, right? So let's see how a strong, experienced player here uh, in a position like this kind of outmaneuvers their opponent. So white plays knight to e5, right? Same thing that Irene did. You remember last game, she played the same knight to e5, but the difference between these two moves is the, is the fact that knight e5, like, white doesn't have any pieces lined up to the king. See, in the last game, knight e5 was the beginning of a plan to expand the position and then create an attack. White's not equipped to attack here, so she just finishes her development and offers a trade. That's what master level players do. They locate the advantageous trades in the position, the right way to transform the position. Like, at some point, you know, uh, this will open up and this bishop will be super strong, right? So f4, that's actually not a bad move, but again, your bishop is not in the right spot. And in the last game, the center was locked. Like if we just very quickly peep on over to the last game, uh, if we go, you know, here, the center is locked. Do you see that? How like it's completely shut. But when you do this and you have like some big attacking plan, at any moment, I can just shred open the center. You need a locked center if you want to go in and attack. So she's finishing her development, rook c8, bishop f3, but the position is still very much in the balance. Now b3 gets played, and here we have knight to f6, continuing to improve, bishop b2, and now our first change of the game. We have knight takes, queen takes, and the new knight arrives on e4, attacking the queen. Uh, now you can either make this trade and lose the bishop for the knight, uh, or you can just move the queen in the game. We just got queen move, and now Irene plays this very important move, f6. Basically saying, look, this knight is standing nicely in the center, but it has no targets. Now the knight has to go to this very awkward square, g4. Now the knight can always rotate back, but it is very uncomfortable. So now Irene plays queen e8. Again, another nice maneuvering move. She wants to go to g6. White plays rook c1. No one's taking anything in the center. Well, queen g6 is planned. Now we get h3. And here we have rook, to, rook f to d8. So the rooks have arrived. They're reinforcing the center pawns, just anticipating the opening of the position. Black has a very good bind. In this position, both players have eight pawns, which means it's a very locked or closed position. In those kinds of situations, it's all about finding the right maneuvers, putting your pieces on their optimal squares for the long-term plan, and anticipating at any moment that a pawn capture or two will drastically open up the board. And here, black is dominant. Black's got the better knight in the center, the better bishops, um, a little slightly better control of the center files. And this move is kind of, again, it, it, you see, just like that last game, that knight to the h5, king h2 is a kind of move like, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. And now after h5, you know, we have f5, an attempted counterattack, because here we have the knight hanging, so white plays f5, striking back, but it's just a bluff, because pawn takes pawn, and you still have the problem of the knight hanging. So now the knight goes back to f2, 
But the problem is that you move this pawn. And by changing that, right, now black is able to create some sort of counterplay. We get bishop to d6. Uh-oh. That's just a free check. Not all checks are the same. This is a great check because you activate your bishop. And now there's the kill shot move, queen to g3. With just one pawn push, it, it, it's kind of funny. You know, it, it, it's sort of like uh, an experienced boxer versus an amateur boxer. The second the amateur throws a punch, the experienced boxer ducks and just immediately counters, right? I mean, think about it. In this game, it was balanced for a while. One wrong pawn push. One pawn push. Take the pawn and then the avalanche. Bam, bam, and that's it. And it's over. I mean, it's, it, it, it's just over. You cannot stop this unless you get rid of the knight because the king has nowhere to move. If you move the rook, I'll take the knight, and then I will mate you in a few moves. So white has to play knight, takes knight. Now we have pawn takes, and again, we see the, that really powerful reinforcement. Black is dominating the game by opening the position in their favor, uh, and also by having just the right amount of infiltration with the bishops. The queen moves, now we get pawn takes, and it's just, it's just getting worse and worse. D5, that's actually a very nice move. D5 is a great move. Disconnecting the bishop, I have to give credit where it's due, but the problem is that after check, the king goes here, and now the queen has been disconnected from the defense of the pawn, and we get check, and uh, white resigns, because after king to e1, there's a few ways to win this position. The easiest is not to trade, do not go into the endgame. Follow the path of the bishop, and the king has to move and stop guarding the rook, and now black is just up a lot. And then you will trade the queens on the next move. So don't trade the queens just because you can, trade them in the right way. So now it's two to nothing. Um, and with that, uh, we move to the third game. Irene switches it up and goes to d4. But uh, d4 and the Karo Khan actually can, can overlap. Uh, they, they can have similar structure. And I'll just, I'll just briefly show you all. You know, she plays the London system in this game. Knight f6, London, very popular. Um, and, you know, if black plays c5 in the London and then takes on d4, this structure where white has lost the e pawn and black has lost the c pawn is exactly like the advance, uh, sorry, the exchange Karokan structure. Like, look at this position with, with, with this, okay? Look at that first, look at this first game. Do you see that? This is game one. The structure is the same. So the London and the Karokan with c5 can actually, sorry, the London with c5 and the Karokan exchange variation can have a similar pawn structure. Irene plays uh, another opening in the second game because she's an experienced player. She knows a lot of different openings, might not know them uh, to the extent that she will play them, you know, in the World Championship, but knows them in a sense that she can play, you know, in most games. And she plays the London. Uh, by the way, here we go. We have C5. And again, see, Dewa Kipos puts his knight on D7. This is just not good. I mean, this is the second game. He did it when he played white as well. He put his knight to, the, to, to D7. But you got to go to C6. I mean, there's no reason to really go to D7 unless... It's like a very specific reason in the in the opening. Go toward the middle because also you just you, you block your bishop. You don't let this bishop be active. His openings weren't weren't bad, but they were very passive. Like they were definitely intermediate, but they were very passive. Irene plays, you know, and now again, this is actually a structural mistake. You would think that in the London playing a move like c4 is a good thing, right? And then like b5. The problem is that now that you have locked the center, what's gonna happen? I just have an attack here. I just have that attack, the same attack as in game one. And what am I gonna do? Well, Irene, you know, she plays principal chess. She knows that, you know, a million people are watching. Um, we have e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop b7, and she simplifies, and she plays exactly what worked in the first game, literally. I mean, you look at the structure, right? So bishop on c2, bishop on f4, and um, she's got the queen potentially lurking, and you kind of always are eyeballing this pawn because if you can somehow bring in reinforcements, it's, it's going to be very vicious, right? So knight d5, she moves the bishop out of the way, and black plays rook c8. Very solid move. She plays a3, so she disallows the move b4. She, she anticipates the queenside counterplay. Black plays a5, though. I mean, he does play a5. He does play the best move. Um, and now queen to e2, queen to f6. The problem with queen to f6 is that there is knight to d7. So black, again... Somewhere in the middle game, plays a move that just, it's just one attacking move. And, knight, and, you know, if he hadn't played that, if he had played like this, then probably white would continue with, you know, rook, queen so far. But so far, this was his most solid game. But then, of course, queen f6, knight d7, queen moves, and then you simplify, and now white is up in exchange. Now, at this point, white, again, when you're winning, you have two options. Number one, just go for an attack. So just try to play queen e4 and deliver mate. And that's what she did. He stopped it. And now she goes to plan two, which is just simplify. Trade the queens, 
Uh, trade maybe bishop for knight or bishop for bishop. Trade a pawn or two, open up, and go to an endgame. He declines the trade. She plays bishop to e4, kind of laser beaming. And now we get knight to b6. The problem with knight to b6 is that that pawn is hanging. So she takes the bishop, and then she takes the pawn, and now she is up a rook and a pawn for a knight. Um, actually, yes, a rook and a pawn for a knight, and here uh, Delakeep is resigned. And he resigned the game because, you know, for example, if he just plays a4, um, he's defending, but it's it's going to be a long game, and, and it's not going to go in his favor. She's going to move the rook up. She's going to move the rook over. Maybe she'll go and try to attack the king, or just bring the queen and the rook in here and try to trade, and it's a very easily winning position, and Irene Sukandra wins the match 3-0. Uh, to nothing. And uh, with that, she took home a nice uh, prize. This was a sponsored match. I told you afterward that, you know, I would give my thoughts on the whole situation. Um, you know, Delaware Keepers earned $7,000 because actually they got some serious sponsorship uh, for the match. You know, I'm, I'm conflicted. Uh, on the one hand, 1.3 million people was the peak viewership of this match in Indonesia. And that's just Indonesia. That just goes to show you that chess does have the potential to be huge. You know, uh, it's nice to see as a, you know, with, the, with the whole chess explosion with Queen's Gambit and, and earlier, all the Twitch events on Pog Champs. Um, people like chess. They are naturally drawn to it because it's curious, it's mysterious, it's interesting. It doesn't have an age minimum or maximum. I mean, little kids, all, you know, uh, older folks can play it. So it's amazing that chess can be popular. It's also good uh, that people who play legitimately, um, you know, get their credit and people who don't, you know, uh, Ultimately, uh, the fair play team is there for a reason. And I guess on the bad news is that the truth was never really admitted. You know, ultimately, you have the evidence and you have, uh, you have kind of like both sides saying what they're saying. Uh, but you, you know, you don't have a confession of any sort. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, uh, Dewa Keepers did take home 7,000 US dollars. And I saw a really funny meme on Twitter. You know the Squidward meme where Squidward is looking out the window? They were like, it's me and then it's Irene and, you know. So... Uh, the truth is that in, there, there, are, there are positives that come out of this situation. Um, of course, I had to deal with death threats and attacks for two weeks, and still going. I mean, I'm still in my YouTube comments. There's still people coming in, you know, telling me terrible things. But hopefully we can put all of this behind us. Uh, and uh, if you're watching from Indonesia or on VPN in Indonesia... Um, well, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I will reopen my channel soon, and hopefully all of this momentum, people can actually watch some videos, learn some chess, and have a good time, maybe play against their friends and win. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's try to keep it peaceful. And by the way, if you're just watching and you've made it this far in the video and you still have no idea what I'm talking about, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive.